Judgment in the appeal, Ipco Nigeria Limited and the Nigerian National Petroleum Company. The respondent, Ipco Nigeria Limited, Ipco, has been trying since November 2004 to establish inter parties a right to enforce in this jurisdiction an arbitration award dated 28th October 2004, which it obtained in Nigeria for some 12 million US dollars plus interest at 14% per annum against the appellant Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Over the same period, NNPC has been firstly trying to have the award set aside in Nigeria, originally on various grounds not involving fraud, and since 27th March 2009, also on the ground that the award was obtained by IPCO by fraudulently presenting documentation and evidence. Secondly, NNPC has been resisting enforcement in England on the same grounds and in the alternative seeking adjournment of the English enforcement proceedings pending the outcome of the Nigerian proceedings. Until recently, IPCO's attempts to secure an inter-parties order for enforcement in this jurisdiction have been adjourned pending the outcome of the Nigerian proceedings on terms that NNPC put up security of $80 million to await the outcome of the English proceedings. I should have said that the award was not 112 million, but 150 or so million. The length of what the Court of Appeal has now, has now described as the sclerotic proceedings in Nigeria has now persuaded the Court of Appeal that the English proceedings must take a different course. The English Commercial Court should itself determine whether the fraud issues constitute a reason why the award should not be enforced. The parties have since also agreed that if this is so, then the Commercial Court should also determine whether the non-fraud issues constitute such a reason. However, the Court of Appeal added conditions to this um, order, namely that NNPC should put up a further 100 million US dollars by way of security, and that this failing immediate enforcement should be ordered against NNPC. The present appeal by NNPC challenges the legitimacy of imposing those conditions in circumstances when a decision on enforcement is, it submits, now no longer to be adjourned pending the outcome of the Nigerian proceedings, but is instead to be made in the current English proceedings. The Supreme Court allows NNPC's appeal and sets aside the order for the further security of $100 million, leaving intact, however, the $80 million previously ordered. The unanimous judgment is given by Lord Mance. Enforcement of a foreign award is governed in English law by Section 103 of the Arbitration Act 1996, which gives effect to Articles 5 and 6 of the New York Convention of 1958. Subsections 2 and 3 of 103 provide for grounds on which enforcement may be refused. One such ground is that the award has been set aside or suspended by a competent authority of the country in or under the law of which it was made. That is ground F and would cover setting aside by a Nigerian court. This is supplemented by section 103 subsection 5 which provides that where an application for setting aside or suspension has been made to such an authority, in this case, therefore, in Nigeria, as it has been, the English court may adjourn the decision on recognition or enforcement and, quote, may also, on the application of the party claiming recognition or enforcement, order the other party to give suitable security. This is the basis on which the $80 million existing security has been ordered and maintained. Another ground for resisting enforcement in this jurisdiction is that it would be contrary to public policy to recognize or enforce the award, that is section 103, subsection 3, and this ground would apply potentially if fraud were to be established on determination of the fraud issues. The Court of Appeal purported to make an order under section 103, subsection 5, whereby any further enforcement of the Nigerian award was, quote, adjourned pending the English court's decision on the fraud issue. 
The Court of Appeal thereby fell into error, since section 103, subsection 5, only applies to an adjournment of English proceedings pending such a decision by, in this case, the Nigerian courts. The Court of Appeal was not ordering any such adjournment within the meaning of section 103, subsection 5. It was simply ordering that the English court should itself proceed to a decision of the fraud issue under section 103, subsection 3. Such a decision can rarely be instantaneous, even if the adjournment is simply over the midday break or overnight, but the process of considering in what sense to make it cannot possibly be described as an adjournment within the meaning of the relevant subsection. No power is conferred by either section 103, subsection 2 or subsection 3 to order the provision of security by a person simply resisting recognition or enforcement on properly arguable grounds. The scheme of the Arbitration Act 1996 following that of the New York Convention is inconsistent with any such power other than that expressed in section 103, subsection 5. The Convention reflects a balancing of interests. Its provisions are not aimed at improving award creditors' prospects of laying hands on assets to satisfy awards. Courts have other means of assisting award creditors which do not impinge on award debtors' rights of challenge, such as disclosure and freezing orders. Section 70, subsection 7 of the Arbitration Act 1996, enabling security to be ordered against an award debtor who is bringing proceedings to set aside a purely domestic award, is of no assistance. First, it contrasts with the provisions of Section 103 dealing with uh, international awards. Second, it does not apply to public policy challenges to enforcement under Section 66, read with Section 81 c And third, even when it applies, there is authority that it only applies where the challenge appears flimsy or otherwise lacks substance, which is not the present case. The Rule 3.13 in the Civil Procedure Rules enabling the English courts to make conditional orders is also of no assistance to IPCO. A condition may be attached to an order as the price of granting some relief or perhaps where the pursuit of a claim or defence is problematic. But NNPC is not seeking any relief and a properly, uh, has a properly arguable case under section 103, subsections 2 and 3. The conditions attached by the Court of Appeal were therefore illegitimate, and the fraud issues together by the parties' agreement with the non-fraud issues should be remitted to the commercial court for determination on their merits without any such conditions. The court is adjourned. <laughs>